Hello, everybody, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where, as you can see, we are going to talk about The Wall, because it was on this day in 1982 that the film version of The Wall, directed by Alan Parker, premiered. Now, the film version of The Wall has always been controversial, both among the members of the band and among the wider public. And this isn't because there's anything particularly disturbing about the film. I mean, it's a very dark and emotive film, but the controversial aspects come from arguments about did it accurately represent the music? Now, the album, of course, is classic. It, it juxtaposes the themes of personal angst after losing your father in a war who lost his father in the war before that, and going out into the post-Second World War reality in Europe and America and facing the kinds of angst and alienation that many people find, whether it's um, a school situation that crushes creativity and self-expression, whether it's uh, the problems associated with fame, money, drugs, relationships between men and women, all of these things are covered. And then there's a parallel theme, which is all about what war does to society, uh, what politics and uh, various forms of uh, dictatorship can do to society, how someone can become involved politically in various movements that are meant to be portrayed as distasteful and all the rest of it. And so there's that dual theme. Uh, and Roger Waters has said many times that he thinks that the, the duality of that theme could have been expressed better, not just in, in the film version of The Wall, but even in the original live versions of The Wall. After 2010, when he took The Wall as a production back out on the road, uh, it was much more about uh, empathizing with victims of war and political oppression. Uh, he, from the very beginning, was talking about Julian Assange, who was recently recently freed from prison. And so these themes making it sort of contemporary, a reflection of the times, whilst also hearkening back to how the Second World War took his father and how the war before that, the great First World War, took uh, his grandfather. He emphasized that in terms of the production and the imagery much more when he brought it back in the 21st century uh, than in the original one, which was much more of an introspective rather than extrospective uh, kind of production. Um, now, the original live shows that Pink Floyd did for The Wall in 79 and 80, uh, were, or 18 and 81 rather, were very successful in terms of uh, the artistry. There were the wonderful inflatables based on the Gerald Scarf designs. He obviously did the artwork and his uh, touches all over the um, film itself. Um, the music was great, uh, but they didn't get to go on a world tour because the production was so big, so costly, so lumbering. They could only do it in a select few cities. Um, they did it in New York, L.A., uh, London, well, Nassau, near New York City, um, L.A., London, and uh, somewhere in West Germany. I can't recall the place, but they did, uh, they did it in West Germany, as it was at the time. And this meant that the kinds of people who would have been on previous uh, Pink Floyd tours where they went all around the world weren't able to see the wall. And so the idea was to turn it into a film that everyone could see. And that's what they did. Now, allegedly, uh, the, uh, the full concerts that they did in Earl's Court in London were filmed. Some have said they were filmed on 35 millimeter film. Others have said that they were filmed on 70 millimeter film. There's really a lot of, um, a lot of bullshit that's been spread about how well this were this or these original concerts were documented. Um, I'm I think a lot of that could be down to the conflicts that emerged within the band after the recording of the wall, and it was really during the making of the film that really made Roger Waters and David Gilmore hate each other, which they still do, and they they probably always will, but. It the the the, the idea that the, they should just shoot a concert film like a traditional concert film, uh, beautifully film the stage and just show it in a in a 
cinema. Now, I think that would have been, from a fan's perspective, the best thing that they could do. Because since most people weren't able to see the show in the flesh, um, why not allow them to do the next best thing? They The idea to do that, though, was uh, poo-pooed early on. Some claim because the lighting wasn't good enough on the stage for film, because they won't release the whole thing on film, we'll never really know, but the brief portions that have come out look pretty damn good. And so they decided to build a kind of a, a formal or semi-formal filmic narrative around the original story of The Wall. And I think they've taken... Taken as a whole, I think it's quite successful. I don't think that Bob Geldof was very good at playing Pink, the lead character. I think he was better than expectations may have indicated, but I just don't think he did a particularly good job in the role. I think that he lost some of the empathy that was required. I think that it was a bit of a wooden performance at times. And if there was someone who, even in the role, which isn't really a speaking role, much per se if there was someone who could have brought out the psychological nuance that roger put into his uh story i think that would have made the film much more successful the cinematography was of course very good uh the animated segments by gerald scarf that would have been familiar to those who saw the live performances those were obviously fantastic um, but I think overall the best cinematic portrayal of the war was what Roger Waters did uh, just a few years ago when he released his film version of the war that mostly focused on a beautifully shot version of the live show, but it was intercut with Roger going from England to Italy, specifically to Anzio where his father was killed in the war. And I think that juxtaposition was really a much better way of telling the story than the original film, even though the original film is rightly and should rightly be regarded as an absolute classic. I think that with Roger taking the bull by the horns and really telling his truth, which is what the wall is, I think he was much more successful doing it in the 21st century film version of the wall than in the 1982 film version. And I think Roger would probably probably agree. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe. We will see you next time. Take care.